So Tears of the Kingdom has been out for about a couple of weeks now and I already put about 145 hours into the game which is absolutely crazy. Like this game has been consuming my life. And with all the time playing the game, I've learned a few things that have been crazy helpful throughout my playthrough. So I've decided that I'm gonna show you guys a few tips and tricks that can make your playthrough go much, much smoother. So one of the biggest, I had no idea this was a thing moment, was actually when a homie of mine pointed out that the depths on the surface are somewhat related. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, whenever you discover a light route down the depths, you can actually correlate the light routes with the shrines on the surface. So if you open up your map and head over to a shrine that you've either completed or discovered, then switch to your depths map, you'll notice that each shrine and light route hover over each other. And that's because every light route you activate, there'll be a shrine located there on the surface map. Now, this is also true for geographic locations as well. The mountains on the surface map will actually be trenches in the depths and rivers on a surface map will actually be walls on the depths. So knowing this can help you traverse the depths and find light routes and other locations much easier. Now, one of the biggest pins in the ass are the transport Koroks that you find all over the map. And because these Koroks are super lazy and need our help, I'm gonna show you the cheapest, most cost-effective machine you can build when hunting for these Koroks. So this build has been hovering around the community for a while because it's that good. It's a two fan one controller build and it works wonders when dealing with these transport Koroks because all you have to do is put a controller in the middle and attach two fans on each side of the controller, then grab the Korok and attach it to one of the fans. Yes, it might be tougher to control because it's heavier on one side, but it's much, much more time effective. So the next tip is actually if you completed the region where the Rito live. I don't know what it's called, I think it's the Tabantha region. So if you haven't gotten here, you might want to skip ahead a few seconds to avoid spoilers. So if you beat this region, you should have acquired Tulin's Vow, which gives you an ability to create a gust of wind to propel you farther while in your paraglider. Well, if you press B then X one second after you activate the ability, it will actually push you much farther, helping you reach places you otherwise couldn't. The community decided to call this trick Tulin Pumping, so this could be an effective method for traversing the overworld. Now, if you haven't yet figured out, Recall and Ultra Hand are extremely powerful abilities, and they also happen to go hand in hand with each other. You see, you can use Ultra Hand to pave a path for Recall because wherever an object was recalled, it will work on. So this can be extremely useful when doing puzzles in certain shrines, or for example, using a wing without a cart to fly. So utilizing the two abilities in a lot of scenarios can make playing the game much better. The fifth trick I'm going to show you guys is actually how to infinitely hover in the sky while using a wing. After a bit of time has passed, the wing will start to glow green, indicating its timer is running out. All you have to do for the trick to work is to jump off your wing and pull the paraglider. From here, you want to be neutral. Press D-pad up and hover over to wing, press X to take it out, then immediately hold forward to jump on the new wing. This can be repeated over and over until you reach wherever it is that you're trying to go. So the next tip seems a bit obvious, but I'm sure I was not the only one that didn't know you can throw items with your hand. At first, I was wasting tons of arrows in the depths attaching them to bright bloom seeds just so I can be able to see. Now, it wasn't until I stumbled across the shrine with the throw tutorial that I actually figured that out. So if you didn't know, all you have to do is hold R and press up on the D-pad to throw whatever you want in your inventory. So one thing people really don't realize is how powerful Zona devices really are, particularly when fusing them to your shields. You see, you can fuse rockets to your shields to boost yourself in the sky to either get to places that are tough or for combat, and fuse Zona devices like wings to shield jump higher. Like in this example, we skip a big part of the shrine by shield jumping onto the rail and making it to the end of the shrine. So I've seen clips of people skateboarding and snowboarding, so you can honestly get very, very creative with this. And the last tip for the video is going to be to take your time with the game and try to complete all the memories and dungeons before you decide to beat it. The story, in my opinion, is very good. It just makes the ending much, much more enjoyable. Tears of the Kingdom is honestly, truly an insane game, and I hope you all love it just as much as I do. I hope these tips were helpful, and if they were, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos in the future, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.